carbon here actually we're going to be starting with as you can see it's in uh, pretty rough shape it's been painted quite a few times before it's got some really bad crazing through the paint there with a re reaction and I've also noticed there's a break there this looks like it's been um, a neck's been forced in and it's cracked it but that's easily fixed I can fix that with some uh, Gorilla Glue slide a bit of glue in there and just slide that back in and that'll clamp down quite nicely so first of all we have to strip this paint here and I think this is cellulose so I tried actually sanding it here and it just basically clogged up all the, uh, the sanding disc etc so I'm going to try and get this orangey pink colour off luckily for me it's just peeling off quite easily with a blade so all this has to come off really we're going to have to try and get down basically to the wood or even to the sealer on top of the wood will be ideal and then we'll start again from scratch so if I left this on now we'd have nothing but problems we'd have reactions we'd have bleed through um, the amount of material we'll have we're going to be putting on this with the metal flake and the base coat we're going to get um, delamination if I left all this on so all this is going to have to come off we're going to strip it right the way back it's going to be like I said it's going to be a long old process stripping it all off so I'm going to stick some uh, movies on or a bit of YouTube and just chill out I won't video on me actually stripping this off but I will uh, when we get to the sanding stage we'll go through that but basically what I'm just going to do is strip this off here with the blade it's an old razor blade, it's not massively sharp, but I don't need two shops, so I want it to dig in. I just want it to slide under that layer of paint. I'm going to get as much as I can off and then we'll start sanding. As you can see we've made a little bit of progress, we're actually outside now because I'm going to be making quite a bit of dust I don't want to uh, get dust all over the car or uh, in my nice tidy workshop The original colour was pink I think, I can't remember what code it is uh, Fender pink, is it salmon pink? Oh, I can't remember anyway uh, But that looks like it was the original colour so we want to get down to either that as our base coat or even better down to the actual wood there so I'm going to actually hit the body now with my dual action polisher sander and put a polishing pad on there hopefully the wind and the weather stays nice and hopefully we're going to take it all down get as nice as we can I'm going to hit it with some uh, 80 grit just to strip it all off close the door up so I'll get dust in there Something like that, as you can see. Coming close there, you can see there's like a sticky, almost like a, a direct gloss paint there underneath this base coat, and that's what's causing the reactions underneath. So if I didn't strip that off, then we'd be in a lot of uh, trouble. So this to here, or even like I said, bit, bit even better would be down to the wood, It'd be a nice finish. So I'll continue with this, and I'll see you in a bit. So I've been at this a while now and it's just clogging up all the sanding discs so I've actually reverted to my heat gun as you can see there the actual pink wasn't even keyed up it's still shiny um, it's only just look that this paint's actually stayed on but it's really it's almost like nail varnish don't know what it is so I must be heating it up so I'm just heating it up with the uh, heat gun and then just scraping it off and then I'm going to go over the whole thing with the sander again and the rest of the uh, back to do here but hopefully it hasn't got as much paint on the back doesn't look like it but we'll see so I'll continue this and then uh, check back with you in a minute so I'm back in the workshop now as it started raining outside and I'm losing light anyway but I've got to this stage now I'm just giving a little bit of wipe over with a bit of panel wipe I can see I'm down to the ceiling here but I've still got these edges to do and in corners here. This is probably taking me approximately two and a half hours but I think it looks quite cool like that. 
See so my bandmate Rick would love that. Sort of worn patina look. You think that was excellent? So if you're watching Rick, what do you think? Anyway, I digress. So it's got a little bit of damage here and there. There's a chip there and there, so it's going to need a little bit of filler work. Um, got some a lot of hand sanding and hand blocking to do, so I want to get this as smooth and as flat as possible. Because once our substrate is nice and stable, we can put our primer on, then we'll block that as well. And the flatter and nicer we get this, the nicer our clear coat will look before we flatten clear. But then when we flatten clear, it'll look even better and give it that nice sort of mirror flat finish. But we're not too bad. Um, the worst bit was that purple god knows what that is made out of but it's almost like nail varnish it's really sticky so this is all gonna have to be done by hand now so i'm gonna sit in my workshop make myself a nice and warm fresh cup of tea i'm gonna drink that i'm gonna sand all this off by hand and then uh, we'll block it again by hand probably with a 180 and we're then ready for primer okay so we're pretty much all stripped now all we've got to do is going with a block. I've got a hard block here which is my wet flatting block which is really flat. As you can see it's a it's a 3M job I think. Gives you a really nice flat finish. I'm just going to go over this first with a, an 80 grit and then I'm going to go over the top with a 180 block just to uh, level out any imperfections. Need some filler work there. Just to make sure everything is keyed and flat. We get this face as flat as possible. Like I said before, then our primer will be nice and flat, and then our base coat will be flat, and then our metal flake and our clear coat will be flat before we reflat it for polishing. So as long as your substrate's nice and sturdy and flat, then make your final job look even better. So all I'm doing is just going over face of the guitar, just to make sure it's all one level. There's that repair there, I've re-glued that and that's nice and solid now. I'm just going to flat that in there, it needs a little bit of filler so I'll do that. I'm going to do the filler work on that. This one, which is a nice 180. I don't mind if I've got some scarring in this from the 80 grit because there's going to be so much material on there. I want a really good uh, mechanical bond to it. So I want all the actual paint to actually stick nice. I don't want it to be uh, delaminated or any problems like that. Just go over the whole thing, and do the front and the back. There's a little bit more work there, it's a little bit high. So again, I'll go in with the Let's take that imperfection out there. And there. That's better. Nice and smooth. See you on camera. Okay, so I'll do the back now, and then I'll go all the way around the edges, make sure there's no shiny bits, like there's a shiny bit there and there. Get all that so it's all nice, matte, no shiny, don't want any shiny bits at all. And then, I think we're about ready for primer. Okay, so it's the next morning, I've done a little bit of filler work, just here, just with a little bit of body filler. Um, across that join there, those two scratches there, and that little mark in there. So I'm just going to flat those down. Again with the block, just to get it all nice and flat. We'll get this all nice and flat and then we'll give it a really good clean with some panel wipe and some window cleaner just to remove any grease and grime and then we'll get the primer on it. So I've got the guitar all hung up now. Basically uh, just put it in this block of wood here, channel this side out so it fits into the neck quite nicely. Not over tight, just there's plenty of room all the way around so I don't want to uh, 
marking the actual uh, neck pocket. I've also masked the neck pocket off um, so no paint actually gets on there so the neck has a nice fit for when the guitar gets to be rebuilt. But we're all ready now. Just hung up from the ceiling on a wire. So we're all ready now for primer. I'll just give it a degrease. I'll give it another clean and then I'm going to give it a couple of good coats just of a high build grey primer in this aerosol from by it's by Paint Nuts. They're pretty good um, paints actually. These are quite stable, which I quite like. Um, I use them on automotive stuff all the time. We haven't actually gone through the actual uh, sealer here as well, which is really nice. We've got a really nice smooth finish. Yeah, there's some scarring in it, but like I said before, I'm not really too worried about that because uh, that'll help with the uh, mechanical uh, grip of the actual paint, the amount of material we're going to be putting on it. So we're probably going to get about maybe five or six coats of clear on this in the end. Okay, so uh, when this is dry, I'll uh, wax some primer on. I'll give the paint a really good shake for about five or six minutes. And then we'll just go over the body. I'm going to do all the do all the edges and angles first, very gently, light coats. No more than that. First coat. As you can see we've got a nice smooth finish. Yeah, there's some scarring little marks in here. We can go in afterwards and uh, address these little marks here with a little tiny bit of filler and then we can prime over that as well. That repair on the neck pocket is quite nice. Lyco. Yeah, needs some more filler there, and you can see on the on the uh, damage there. So we'll do a couple of coats of primer. We'll sand it down. Do some more repairs. And we'll put some more primer on until we get a really nice finish. How heavy these guitars are when you do it in one hand. Okay, so I'll let that dry. I'll hang it up in the workshop to dry, it's nice and warm. And then we'll uh, do another couple more coats, do those little repairs, and then more primer. As you can see, we're all primed up now. I've got a little bit to blow in here. I've been over the whole thing with a 180 just very lightly to take the nap off. Make it nice and flat. Now I'm going to go with a little bit of red scotch just to make sure all the little uh, areas are all clean and keyed up. And then we'll give the guitar another clean before we put the base coat on. But I will blow a little bit in there, add a little bit of repair. So I'll just knock that back a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah, there's a little scratch there. I'll knock that back. So now, like I said, I'm going to go all over the whole thing with this red scotch bright just to make sure it's all keyed up, there's no shiny patches, and then we'll give it a really good clean with the window cleaner and the solvent degreaser, and then we're ready for base coat. Okay, so it's been about a day or so since the last clip, because I've been waiting for this, which is the base coat. Let's open up and have a look. It's from Custom Paints on oh, custom cans. I've, I've used these before. I think they're based in Sheffield. And as you can see you can get loads of different things all in aerosol as well as the flakes and things like that. Candies etc. Really good company. Their base cuts are really nice as well. You get, they custom make them. I'll custom mix them for you in an aerosol. So this is the base we're going to be using which is a turquoise to match the turquoise metal flake. So this is going to go under the metal flake so when we put the metal flake on we get a better coverage and we get also the pearl and the metallic from the actual base coat coming through as well. There's a nice nozzle. So what we'll do now is get the uh, guitar body into the garage so it's all nice and warm and we we'll start putting this on. 
So here we are in the uh, garage. I've had the heater on for about probably an hour or so just to take the actual chill off in the air. It's a little bit cooler in here today. So uh, we're going to have a lot longer flash times, I think. I've given the guitar a good clean, but now I'm just going to give it another spray over with the solvent panel light, and then we'll give it a um, attack. We've got everything covered in plastic in here. Keep the overspray down to a minimum. Looks a bit like uh, an episode of Dexter. See, so still dirt coming off it. It's quite um, aggressive, this degreaser as well, which is good because it gets all the uh, dirt and grime off. I've got this as well, I can use the uh, and I can use that just to control the guitar when I'm painting it. The amount of material really should be painted laying down. But I haven't actually built a uh, jig up for that yet. That's something I'll be doing later in the year I think. Especially if I start getting a few more guitars. I've got a couple I want to actually build for myself. Actually I want to build another Les Paul. And I think I want to build a Telecaster because I've never actually owned a Telecaster. I've played a few, but I've never actually owned one, so I think I'm going to uh, get myself one as well. Just a kit and paint it up. Maybe just do a wood stain on it. I've always liked the um, the Prince's Telecaster with that sort of natural look with the uh, with the uh, pearl scratch guard. So I may even do that, yeah, but I don't know, and then just clear coat it. No, I may have probably add some pearl into it. <laughs> okay, so I think we're all set. Just give that front another quick wipe. I think there's a bit of a mark there. The last thing I want now is reactions. I need to get it as clean as possible. So when I actually do the uh, metal flake, I'll have to have the camera further away, but we'll show you after uh, I've done each coat. The clear coat will actually destroy the camera lens. It's alright for base coat. Right, that's nice and clean now. Okay, so we'll give that a light tack, and then we'll get the base coat on. Got the uh, base coat. Just put that down there for a sec. Right, give this a bit of a tack. This isn't a standard tack cloth, just to uh, make sure there's no loose dirt or dust. And also give it a little bit of a dry as well. Make sure we go all the way around the edges in the actual apertures as well. Just basically clean, clean and clean again. Just get it as clean as you can, hopefully. That should give us a nice clean base for our metallic and then for our uh, metal flake. But it doesn't really matter too much because the amount of material I'm actually going to be putting on this is going to be quite extensive. So if there are any marks or dirt in it or things like that, I can bury it with the clear coat and then flatten polish it to make it look nice. Okay, let's try this. Cool, that's metallic, isn't it? That's just very gentle, light coat. It goes on quite heavy, this material, because it's actual base coat. It's not just normal aerosol. So I'm going to flash off just a sec. So like I said, because it's cool in here, the drying times are going to be increased probably by 50%, maybe 100%. So usually I'll wait 5-10 minutes between each coat. But this, especially with the metallic, 
think we're going to have to wait something like 10 20 minutes between maybe even half an hour between each coat it's going to take probably like most of the day to paint this guitar today right we're going to leave that as it is just to flash off beautiful color though isn't it you see the scar in here i don't know if you can see that on camera some scar in here but i'm not too worried about that because metallics do show every single mark and the scar in and things but all the metal flake will hide that but that's pretty nice color isn't it like that Right, we'll let that drive, I'll flash off for 10-15 minutes, come back and give it another coat. That's been about 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 actually, it's nice and dry now. Best got dries pretty quick, it's a clear coat, it's going to take the longest. So we can just put that in there. Slightly heavier this time. About fifty percent overlap. So Really nice and even, nice and flat. Beautiful colour. Mine just that as a colour actually. Yeah. Okay. Again, we'll leave that another 10 15 minutes just to flush off again. Then we'll do a light dust coat over the top. A little bit of band in there, that's not too bad. So I'm, like I said before, I'm not really worried because I'm putting uh, metal flake over the top. But it's a really nice colour. You can see that on how it looks on camera. Slight iridescent pearl to it as well with a metallic turquoise. Very nice. In case we leave that, like I said, for 10 minutes, come back to another coat. See what I've missed a little bit down the bottom there. So we're going to just do a nice control coat further away this time, a little bit faster. As you can see, it puts a little bit more metallic in. Some people call it a drop coat. Some people call it a control coat. It's not really necessary when you do a metal flake. I just want to. Uh, you can have it doing these sort of things becomes almost like muscle memory. Shield it underneath. I'll double check it with my torch as well. Just to make sure that all the areas are covered. That looks pretty good. And down the edge. Want to spin for me? No. Nope. I'm impressed with their base coats. I've used a lot of their materials before. You can get uh, loads of stuff for airbrushing as well, which I'll probably be uh, doing a little bit more of anyway. I do enjoy airbrushing. Yeah, pretty good. Right, so now that I'm going to leave over lunch probably for an hour to really set up. Don't check it first, go with the torch make sure all the areas are covered but like I said before it's not really massively important and we can go 100% flake but we will check it and then we'll leave it for an hour before we even attempt to put the uh, metal flake on right so I'm starting to get set up now for the metal flake uh, I've got two pots here one I'm going to mix some clear in then I'm going to pour some of the clear into the other pot and then we'll mix our metal flake into that the clear I'll be using is a Max Mayer clear, 
It's a high solid. So basically, it's a two to one mix. It's quite thick. This one to two, and then the hardener is Universal Hardener by HP Body. It's a fast hardener. You know, we want on a weather like this today, quite cold. Just started pouring with rain as well. Another storm on the way. I don't want it massively thin, so I'm not going to put any thinners into it. I'm quite thick. Get my uh, mixing stick. Give that a stir. So I've probably got there just under 200 millilitres. really stir it in. It's quite thick which is nice. I'm going to have the pressure quite high. So I'm not really bothered about getting a flat finish. I just want to get coverage with clear. So what we'll do, we'll separate that out now into there. We'll go 100ml. Leaving that there. Put that to one side because we'll use that later. We'll use that as our finishing coats. Let's give that a bit of fall in it. Stay, stay. Right. The gun I'm using is my old Sealy S701G. It's a really old gun. I've really abused this. It needs a new pot, really, so I might even treat myself to a new pot for it. I think the gun cost me 20 quid probably 10 years ago. Um, it's not bad actually for a cheap gun. I painted the Nissan with this uh, with this gun. If you haven't seen the Nissan, where have you been? Go back and have a look at some of the videos. Uh, with my little regulator on there. And the flake we're using is by Auto Flake by Hemway. This is the turquoise flake. Just open that up. We're going to be using quite a bit. So I want to get coverage, or 100% coverage, with as little passes as possible. It's quite a fine flake. It should go through the gun nicely. So we're going to put plenty in there, probably that much, and we may even put a bit more in. And give that a good stir. Really get that in there. Oop, nearly knock it over, that would have been fun. Yes, there's the coverage we need. As, uh, as you pull your stick up, that's the coverage you're going to get. So it's pretty much 100% already. So that should be ideal. Whack it straight in the gun, no filter. You don't filter out. Metal flake. Again, we'll stick that to the side. Stick the lid on. Get our mask, because we definitely wear a mask when you're spraying clear coat. And we'll get it in the uh, garage and uh, lay down some flake. Well, that's the compressor up to pressure. Ready to go, I think. Just double check it over. Looks okay. Let's open the air. I've got two filters in my airline. Keep the water out, water traps. Right. I'm do all the edges. I won't be able to talk while I'm asking at the same time, so I'll do all the edges and I'll blow all the edges to the light coat all over and uh, all over and then uh, we'll build it up slowly, probably three or four coats.
Right, that's one coat. That's just a very light dusting coat. You leave that for a good 10-15 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer, because it's, as you can hear, it's pouring the rain. It's quite cold today. And then we'll do a heavier coat in the next one. And then we'll build it up till we get pretty much 100% coverage. But for the first pass, it's pretty good. And you see glittering in any light there. Imagine that 100% is going to look amazing. And then really deep gloss with a clear coat. Right, so that's probably five coats of flake on there now. You can see it through the camera. So what I've got to do now is let this settle for another 25 minutes. Yeah, I've probably had probably 25-30 minutes in between each coat. You can see there's quite a lot of peel in there. And you can see the actual roughness of the flake. But this is all going to be buried in clear. So what I'm going to do now it says leave this for 25 minutes, let it settle right down, almost hardened because it's still very wet. And then we're going to put two coats of clear on, again 25 minutes in between each coat. So in uh, YouTube land that's probably less than a second. But here it's going to be about an hour. So that's an hour and a half waiting time now, drying time, before we can actually say this first stage of this lacquering job is finished. Because when this is done We'll flat the lacquer down to a smooth finish, probably something like um, an 800. Then we'll put two more coats of clear on, maybe three, give it that depth of shine. Then we'll flat and polish, and it should be job finished. Sounds quick and easy, doesn't it? Flaking that, beautiful. I'm just going to let that sit now, not rush it. Worst thing you can do with these is rush it. Especially with a job like flake and custom colours like candies, just do not rush it. Take your time. Doesn't matter if it takes all day. This is probably going to take in total, with drying times as well, two weeks and polishing. That's a long old time, but most of it is drying times in between coats. A little bit of a tiny run there, but I should be able to lose that in the clear coat. You'll be able to see it. So, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea, sit and watch a bit of TV, or some YouTube or something, and then we'll wipe the first coat of clear on. So I've put two coats of clear on there. There's still some peel in it, but I'm going to flat that and then give another couple of coats of clear, and then we'll uh, flat and then polish. I think I'm going to put the light on there as well. That's pretty good. You can see the green in there as well. So I'm going to let this dry now. I'm going to hang it up in a second. Just got it in front of the heat lamp. I'm going to hang it up and let it dry for two or three days. Then we'll flat it and get ready for the next coat to clear. Just give you another look as well at the front. You can see some of the peel in there. That is really nice. Really happy how that's come out. After flat, re-clear, then flatten the polish. It's going to look amazing. It's going to really make the flake stand out. That's the end of part one.
Make sure you join me in part two when I'll be re-clearing the guitar, flatting and polishing up to a mirror finish. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you soon.